Hey everyone, it's Nick here with another video and again about power pages. But this time this is pretty exciting. This is about site settings as environment variables. So why is this such a big deal? In currently, if we're developing a power pages website, we create it on our dev site and then we can move it down to our downstream sites. Now, if you're using the enhanced data model, you know you can move these in solutions. I did a video probably a year or two ago on how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. You add your site to the solution and then you can use pipelines or you can export or use Azure DevOps, different ways to move it as a solution. There are other ways to move a Power Pages site using the PAC CLI. And now the PAC CLI, that's good for if you're still using the standard data model. It does work for the enhanced data model. Something the PAC CLI has is something called deployment profiles. With deployment profiles, you can set unique settings for each downstream environment. The same if you were deploying Power Apps or Power Automate you would want sometimes unique values in your downstream environments. So for instance, for power pages, this is commonly things like site settings. So if you're doing um, some sort of authentication provider like Entra or Azure AD B2C, you're going to want unique authentication settings for each environment. Now, in order to do this with full solutions, what you're, what's going to have to happen is up until now, You'll move your solution and then you'll have to go into those downstream environments and configure those site settings there. That's going to cause an unmanaged layer and that's something we really want to avoid. We want to have good healthy ALM where we want managed solutions in our testing, our, our UAT and our production environments, leaving the unmanaged for our development environments. So Microsoft has now released a brand new feature that's going to allow us to use site settings uh, or use environment variables within our site settings or move our site settings as environment variables to downstream environments. So as opposed to me chatting about it, let's actually take a look. So I'm into the Power Pages management, or sorry, the Power Pages design studio. I went into security. I'm looking at my identity providers. I have already configured my Microsoft Entra external ID and that's in the preview. That was the last video I did. If you wanna check out how to do that, you can see me do the walkthrough. If I just go in and just take a look at the edit configuration, I see I have my authority, my client ID, my redirect URL. Most of these values have to be unique to the particular website into that particular environment. If I move this website to a downstream environment, these values have to change. Now, what I had to do before is once I moved my site down to a downstream environment, I would have to go in to the design studio in that downstream environment and reconfigure all of these if I was moving it using solutions. If I was using the PAC CLI, I could use um, deployment profiles, but we want to kind of, the, it's, great, it's great to use Power Pages within the context of solutions because it lines up with the rest of the Power Platform. Now, these values here, this is something maybe you don't know. The, when you set these values, when you're configuring an identity provider, for example, and most things with the Power Pages websites, these will get stored in the Power Pages management app, or actually it will get stored in Dataverse tables, which we can access with the Power Pages management app. And with the enhanced data model, it's actually being stored through virtual tables or short as JSON files and other tables. There's a, I think I have other um, either blogs or videos on how all that works. So really when it comes down to it, if I look at my site settings, I see that I have all my values here. Let's just uh, shrink that down a little bit, move those out. My different settings here, I have like the all these as site settings for my particular provider. Um, I have two websites actually, so that's why I see things doubled up here a little bit, but we have those values, they're stored here as site settings. Now, so not a big deal. What has to happen is when we go into our destination environment, we could configure it here or we actually use the wizard. Doesn't really matter. This is where this information is being stored. In a downstream environment, that would get stored as an unmanaged layer. And again, we want to try to avoid that. So how do we do that? Well, here's a new thing. If I actually go into the site setting now, you will notice that we have a different source. We have environment variable or table. Now table is the, I would say the old way or the legacy way of doing it where we have an actual text value stored here. But the fact that we now have the ability to set it to an environment variable means that we can link in an existing environment variable. Now I've set that up here. So if you're new to environment variables, that's a pretty cool thing. Let's, this is, uh, it's all good. I'm gonna go into a solution that I created earlier. Let's just increase the size a little bit here. 
and you see here I've set up some environment variables. So I've gone in and I've actually captured some of those Entra ID values and I'm actually storing these as environment variables. For instance, here's the client ID, here's the default value. Um, if I wanted, I could set to a current value. So here I'm setting the default values and I'm setting up all the unique things. So I have the client ID, I have the authority default value, which is that URL. I have the metadata address. And again, to configure Entra ID, just look at the last video and blog I did. So I have these default values and of course the redirect URI as well. I have all these values, they're stored as environment variables. So now with these environment variables that are in my solution, if I pop back over into my site settings, instead of choosing table, I'll choose environment variables and then I can do a lookup and I can select um, my environment variables. And of course we see all the other dataverse environment variables there as well. So that's pretty cool. Now that we've set these up as environment variables, that means that in our downstream environments, it's going to look to that environment variable, which means that we can have unique values still within the context of our managed solutions. So how would these get set? Pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go back into my solution explorer. I'm gonna hit the magic rocket that everybody loves for pipelines. And see here, I have my pipeline set up. It's just, a, just called a deployment train. Um, I'm not sure I've if I've done stuff on pipelines. I know I've showed pipelines with Power Pages specifically, but if you're interested in how uh, pipelines works, I'm actually doing a session at Dynamics Con. You can check that out if you're going to be there. But if you want some content on Power Pipe Power <laughs> Power Platform pipelines, let me know because I'm living and breathing it now and learning all sorts of fun stuff. Anyways, so what we do here, we have our test site. We have so we have a completely different environment. I'm going to hit the deploy here. Uh, I want to schedule this now. And then we're actually, as we're deploying the solution, it is actually going to show me the environment variables. Now, I've already gone in, I've captured those new values. I've set up a brand new Enter ID um, application. I've captured all the values. I had to guess a little bit of what my URLs um, redirect would be and fill that information in because I haven't actually set that up. The, the redirect URI is something that gets generated based on the URL of the Power Pages site. Um, so I've picked that based on, you know, using test because I know that's what the URL is going to be. So I can fill in these values or depending on our target site, we could put in these values or we can just leave these as is. And then I hit next. And then basically, yep, uh, Copilot will actually generate me some notes and things like that. And I just hit the deploy button. And now it's going to go through and move that solution, including my website. I've added the website to the solution. I've shown you that before but also those environment variables, it's gonna take those and move these to that downstream environment. All right, so we've seen here that our solution is now deployed successfully. I'm gonna go over into, I've now gone into my destination environment here. And if we go into the Power Pages site. Now, one thing I did wanna point out, I did point this out in the blog as well, that if this is the first time you're deploying a site, it's going to show up in the inactive sites here. So what you're going to want to do is go and hit that reactivate button and that will provision a Power, uh, Power Pages um, Azure web app. Um, so that is something you will have to do manually still. There's no way to trigger this um, that I'm aware of anyway. And so that would be, only, and you only need to do it the first time. Now, after that, each time you deploy, if we go into our site here, um, into the Power Pages Design Studio, if I go into my security settings and let's take a look at those identity providers. And if I take a look at the Microsoft Entra external and go into configure, we can see here that these values are actually now my test values that were being deployed using those um, environment variables. So that's really, really cool. That's actually now, it's all in a managed layer. So I can even go into the Power Pages management app and take a look. Let's look at those site settings. We can actually see that information's been, been brought over, um, but it is actually using the um, environment variable instead. So if I were even to go into here and drill down into this, we actually see it is using, it's not the default value, we actually have the other value that we're transferring over. All of this is really cool. This is just going to make ALM so much easier for Power Pages using solutions and the enhanced data model. This is something we've been waiting for a long time. I'm pretty excited about it. It is rolling out. You will need to use have a 
portals 9.7.2. blah 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 um, in order for this to be active. So double check that if you are trying this out. You should be able to see this in your Power Pages management app. But my portal took a few days to update to this. So you have to make sure it's at least 9.7, whatever, for this to work. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. Do check out the companion blog where I kind of go into a lot of those little details as well. Hopefully this information is going to help you in your Power Pages projects. And I look forward to the next one.